Hi de ho and happy Monday to all of my friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options and this is the Morning Market Prep video for October 11th, 2021. So Friday turned out to be just a real choppy day. As a matter of fact, after the gap up open, let's take a look right here. After the gap up open on Friday, we just kind of languished around chopping in a very narrow range. As a matter of fact, I wish someone would have told me that they were just planning to take the day off. I could have certainly had a nice long weekend on Friday, <laughs> beginning on Friday, but um, unfortunately, I think there's a chance that we could see the same today. And I say that because we um, have banks closed today. We have the bond markets closed today for the Columbus Day holiday. So on this federal holiday, there is a really good chance that we could struggle to find inspiration here in the market. And that's largely due to um, just the circumstances of the day. We have almost nothing to move on there's nothing on the earnings calendar to get us moving there's nothing in the economic calendar to get us moving so it could be you know foreign influences or potentially um, sound bites coming out of congress as they wrangle around over their social programs bill and and that kind of thing to maybe find inspiration and yet we kind of have this anticipation this week because we will begin fourth quarter earnings on Wednesday with JP Morgan kicking things off Wednesday morning and then we have the FOMC minutes where I suspect investors will be searching for clues as to when or if um, taper may begin here in the United States. So an interesting uh, beginning to the week as we used to say in the army it's hurry up and wait and I think we could be seeing a day like that today. But let's take a look at the technicals, see if we can gain some information for this Monday morning market prep video. So good morning once again, everyone. Um, kind of a long intro there this morning, but let's take a look at the technicals here in the charts and see if that can help us gain any information about the day. First off, last week we had a pretty good, depending on how you draw this, this trend line, but if you draw a draw trend line through here, we certainly broke that trend line to the upside. And now the, the key element here is we need to prove that we can hold a, a level of price support. We have some price support right through here that could hold us and notice that we've got just a little bit of bearishness coming in here this morning. Nothing major, uh, but also keep in mind we have a, um, a bigger range of price resistance right up through this area right in here. And unfortunately, that happens to be right in the same area as where we could run into that 50-day moving average as resistance. And notice we've tried that a couple of times and so far have not been able to best that. It's really going to come down probably to data, earnings data, um, this week as to whether or not we will find enough inspiration to push on through. Um, could be an interesting week for sure. So let's keep a close eye on that. Diamonds has a lot of work to do yet, but it has improved significantly as well. Now, if we were to find some uh, bearish inspiration, just watch these price levels right in here. If we can hold right in here and bounce off of that, we should be okay. But if we were to slip into this, more into this gap, it could actually be um, a rather painful sell-off into here if that were the case. So watch for that possibility. That is certainly in the cards and we'll want to watch for that possibility. Now, if we were to break this level of price support, then, you know, all bets are off. We could easily come all the way back down into here, but I don't see that happening at least today because I think mostly we're going to see a choppy range bound day um, trying to find some inspiration here in the market. I could be wrong, but I just get that impression the market's going to be pretty lackadaisical today. Then let's take a look at the SPY. 
SPY. Also, we popped through that downtrend. It all depends on how you draw that, that chart. But for me, if I draw this this way, I think we've popped through that downtrend. Now, the key element here in the NASDAQ is this, or in the SPY is going to be very much the same here um, as the Dow. Unfortunately, we have a little bit more of a complication in here. I want to point out that we still have this head and shoulders pattern that showed up and we broke the neckline of that head and shoulders pattern. So we do have that little bit of bearishness in there and we have a price resistance level right through here and of course right up through here that could still challenge us to, to the upside. So we're gonna have to watch that pretty closely. If we can find that bullish inspiration and we can hold this higher low, then there certainly is that opportunity that we could bounce in here and prove um, and get ready to move to the upside. But we still have to beat that 200 day or 50 day moving average. And as you can see, it's been a little bit problematic um, where we actually have placed a new lower high on that chart, um, trying to reach up there and grab that 50. So watch that closely. Now, if we find that bearish inspiration, there is that possibility of filling this gap like we talked about in the Dow. And if that doesn't hold, well, hang on tight because there could be a substantial sell-off if that were to occur. On the QQQ, we're going to have very much the same situation except for the complication that the QQQ is showing just a bit more weakness. Notice that we have failed again. We were not able to break through that downtrend here in the NASDAQ and we have a substantial um, price resistance level in this chart as you can see. So we need to be able to get back up through that. And unfortunately, we've had those uh, bonds moving up here, and that's con continuing to add additional pressure or worry, I guess, to NASDAQ investors in here. And failing at this lower high could be critical. Notice that this morning we're already going to be dropping down and possibly filling that gap. So it wouldn't be out of the question here, guys, if we find some bearish inspiration in this chart. The QQQ could be the one to lead us back down and maybe try and test this level of price support here again in the chart. So watch carefully for that if those bears find some kind of inspiration here on the day. We still have some work here to do. And notice that we didn't even come close to our 50 day moving average on that bounce back. So that's gonna be problematic here and may actually result in a at least a double bottom or potentially in that higher low where we can catch in here someplace to try and push us back up. Remember that 200 day moving average is not that far away on all of these indexes and could easily be tugging on that um, that price average in the chart. So let's keep a close eye on that. And then let's take a look at our Russell. Now the IWM has enjoyed a pretty good rally in energy and energy um, saw a little bit of pullback on Friday. And even though oil prices continue to surge, as a matter of fact, topping $81 a barrel today, um, we have um, this little bit of a problem with this downtrend. We've got this uptrend in here. So we're chopping in a symmetrical triangle. And what typically occurs in symmetrical triangles is we stay range bound until we figure out whether we can find enough in inspiration to pop through and hold or break down and hold that as resistance. So don't be too surprised if we just can kind of continue to stay range bound in um, this triangle, trying to figure this out here in the NASDAQ. One thing I will say um, is, or excuse me, the Russell. One thing I will say is the Russell's had about a year's worth of consolidation up here. So we've got, it's going to take some pretty good inspiration to pop us through to the upside. And on our moving averages here, notice we, we do have that situation where if we find some bearishness here in the market, it wouldn't be too much work to get that 50 day moving average to kind of tail down over that 200 day with the death, death cross. However, if we can find some good bullishness in here, we could just glance right off. We could just 
come down here and bing, run right off of that and start pushing higher in the Russell. So um, watch for that potential as well. Let's take a look at our VIX. Now our VIX on Friday had a nice little rest, um, continuing this pullback. So the good news here is the bulls have calm down the nerves of the market here just a bit. Notice we had that um, that break up here above that um, that downtrend and now we have sufficiently failed that to the downside. Now the question is going to be can we continue to hold this upside trend? Now we're, we're just below our 20 handle and that's that key support or resistance level I think in the chart. So watch that carefully here. If we can hold this support level we could easily pop back above that. However, if we can find that bullish inspiration, we can maybe see that fear continuing to drift off here. And on choppy light volume days like we might end up getting today, we can often often see the VIX kind of drift along. So just watch that closely. Then let's take a look at our T2122. Now this is a problem for the market um in in the sense that t2122 we got a little bit overbought there on uh thursday but notice the friday we pulled back a bit from that overbought condition so the question becomes will we find that bullish inspiration or bearish inspiration if we can find the bullish in inspiration we certainly have upside that we could go now with that little bit of Friday selling. If we were to happen to break down and fill that gap or even move lower than that, we certainly have plenty of downside that we can move here um, in T2122 now. In our T2107, these are this is the percentage of stocks above their 200-day moving average. We have seen some improvement in here. Notice we had a little bit of a higher low showing up in that chart, but unfortunately we have not been able to break above that downtrend yet here in that chart. So perhaps we can find some kind of inspiration in here break through this resistance and get up here we really need to see some of these stocks picking up or it's going to be really difficult just for the big banks and big tech on its own to lift these up out of the doldrums it can be done as we have seen before but it may be a little bit difficult It'd be a lot easier if we can get some of these guys moving to the upside so watch that closely only 43 percent of the stock currently holding above their 200-day moving average. Let's take a look at our T2101. T2101 just kind of wandered on uh, Friday with that choppiness. Notice we had just that mark of breadth pulling back just a little tiny bit. We still have this problem where we're running in this downtrend. And if you look at this, a rather sharp um, downtrend right here, breadth seems to just be languishing here a bit. So watch that closely. It's not critical or anything yet at this point but is just a little bit on the concerning side we just seem to be lacking that momentum we could perhaps find that inspiration for momentum though of course later on this week as we start hitting some of those big bank earnings reports let's take a look at our economic calendar for today and really the rest of the week um, the economic calendar for today virtually nothing. We have a Fed speaker later on after the market closed today. Other than that, nothing going on here with banks being closed and, and that kind of stuff. Keep in mind here on Tuesday, we have the job openings report that has that potential. It can move us around a little bit, but I suspect guys, the, the, big, the big stuff is going to happen here on Wednesday. First off, Wednesday morning, we're going to get uh, JP Morgan reporting, we're going to get a CPI report that, of course, could be very important and move the market. And then FOMC minutes, where those investors will be looking for some kind of clues as to when or if 
um, the Fed is talking about tapering. So watch that closely. Um, obviously, on Thursday, we're going to have the normal weekly jobless claims, and we're going to have a PPI number. Um, that could be important as we continue to struggle with inflation. Um, watch that PPI. And then retail sales will be the big number on Friday to be aware of. That one certainly could be a moving uh, uh, market moving event, particularly with the supply chain challenges, could be affecting this. So watch that close. Let's take a look at our earnings calendar. And today we have nine companies listed on the earnings calendar, but not a single one of them are confirmed uh, reports. So no notable earnings today um, at all because it's it's unlikely um, we will actually have one of those step out and report. Um, Wednesday we begin. We begin the fourth quarter earnings season. We're going to have JP Morgan kicking things off on Wednesday. Delta Airlines is in there and a few other uh, notables that might pop up here as we go along. And then Thursday is the big day where we're going to hear from Bank of America, Citibank. We're going to get uh, Progressive. We're going to have U.S. Bank Corp in there. We're going to have Morgan Stanley reporting. Um, Thursday will be a big day for the market. So um, as we kind of... Just hurry up and wait um, for the week to really kick off in the middle of the week. We could see some choppy um, price action. Don't be too surprised if we toss around just a little bit and we could see some volatility in it. Um, but watch those things closely. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me a quick favor. If this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so that you can be notified every time I post one of these videos. And if you find these videos to be worthy, to be helpful, please do me a favor. Click those thumbs up buttons, leave that brief comment, it helps those algorithms continue to show these videos to more folks and it's the engagement with you the, with the video that makes all the difference. We're kind of creeping toward that 25,000 level um, in subscribers and so thank you so much to everyone who does participate and help with that. I really truly appreciate it and also just that huge shout out to everyone out there that has supported the channel through the buy me a coffee link. You guys can find that just right below the title of the video and I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who does do that. Let's take a look at some of these stocks that could be setting up and let's keep in mind that these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. As a matter of fact, you're going to have to be um, really careful with your due diligence and making sure that um, these some of these stocks are very stretched out in the short term. Some of them need a little bit more um, uh, work to become a trade. So watch this closely. Let's take a look at YY. Now YY, I actually placed a price alert on the chart. And you can see on Friday, we kind of tipped, tipped that um, um, up into that um, position and I didn't buy this just because it was Friday and I felt like the market was kind of languishing. But let's keep an eye on this. Um, YY is coming up in what we call a rounded bottom breakout pattern. That's where that 50 day moving average um, has been tailing off. It's well below the 200 day. Notice that we're crossing above trying to hold in there. Might be worth keeping an eye on this um, to see if that can hold this base in here. So watch that carefully as we kind of creep up here on YY might be an interesting chart. Take a look at KMI. Now KMI, I have to tell you guys, I do have a bias on this because I did buy this the other day. And uh, KMI is looking very, very good. As we know, natural gas is becoming a big deal in the world today. And um, particularly um, um, big energy issues in China and big energy issues in Europe. So let's keep an eye on that KMI holding up quite well, trying to push on through this morning. So looking good on that trade. Now I wouldn't want to 
I wouldn't want to chase this. Wait until this gets a little bit of a rest or pullback, and then that could look pretty good overall. Um, you might also want to take a look at um, some stock like Alcoa. Now, Alcoa is going to be reporting on the 14th, so that, that may just toss us completely out for your potential trade. But what we're seeing here in this chart is a, a break of that support here in the chart and a rally back to that area. So what I look for when I'm looking for a short trade, I wanna see those stocks rally back to a position of short right into the, those resistance areas, and then I would look for that failure. Now, of course, earnings could mess that up completely, but we'll look for that pattern if you're actually looking for a short trade in charts. You might wanna take a look at some of the energy sector areas as well. Anything in energy is has been extremely strong. And take a look at refining. I mentioned this last week, refining, pushing through some resistance levels here in the chart, continuing to push on up. Notice that we could run into some price resistance right in here in that chart. So any rest or pullback in here, definitely could set up an opportunity in that chart. I wouldn't really want to chase it right here, but watch that carefully. Now you can find the same thing in lots of energy stocks. Take a look at like ExxonMobil. ExxonMobil surging up today and I see they got a little bit of a nod from Goldman this morning. So watch that carefully as this approaches resistance in the chart. But you can literally go through just about any stock in that oil sector and see lots and lots of strength. So watch that carefully. Another place you might want to look take a look at Oracle here. Oracle surprisingly has been really, really strong even though tech has been struggling. Notice how Oracle's broken through this resistance. Now, again, I wouldn't wanna chase this, but a rest of consolidation or a pullback that holds in on this trend would set up a pretty good opportunity here in Oracle. Keep a close eye on that one. Um, you um, know that I have been mentioning ACB. ACB is finally getting this little bit of a rest. So let's watch this in here. If we can find a support level in this chart, maybe find it right along here. If we can find that support level on this little resting pullback, that could actually set up our uptrend. Watch that carefully and see if ACB can get moving from there. Wouldn't want to hold my breath on it just yet, but watch that closely. Could be picking up. And I've mentioned AMD as well. AMD, I think, is a possibility. Notice in this little resting pullback, we tried a couple, three times. We popped up here and broke that downtrend, and then that market volatility just kind of sank us right back down. But notice we've picked back up. We're holding above this downtrend, so we need a little little help in the tech sector but if that can push on through like like we have here holding this support and downtrend this time watch for that to maybe get some inspiration to push off to the upside so watch that one closely as well I want to I want to tell you guys that we could see a very light and choppy day today. We could see a lot of range bound stuff. So be careful with that desire to just rush in to risk. It might be the kind of day where you just pop some popcorn and put your feet up a little bit and um, just watch the market gyrate around um, until we find some of those inspiration points um, in midweek. Be careful um, loading up too heavily in charts. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great success in your trading. And I will see you right back here, bright and early, Tuesday morning. Have a great one, everyone.